The way that I feel sick as if this is my own album release is bizarre. So here in the UK, this is the time. 4.55, the only time I would normally see this time of day would be if I was going to the airport or option B. We are five minutes away from a new Taylor Swift album. I don't know what to expect. I am in my pajamas. So we really can't comment too much on the appearance because it is 4.55 a.m. I can't believe we're here again. I literally cannot believe we are literally T minus four minutes off new Taylor Swift music that I don't know. I, I have no expectation. I haven't heard any leaks online other than a potential leak of the opening track Fortnite, which it turns out is the single, which I've heard on TikTok. I don't know if it's real. I'm gonna listen on my laptop alongside the lyric. I'm so stressed. Why am I stressed as if I'm releasing it? It's about to be 5am in about 30 seconds. I don't know what Spotify is going to do. Okay, it's 5am. These songs, I don't know them right now. And once I click on them, they'll just osmosize into my brain. Is it there? Is it there? Oh my god, her whole Spotify has just gone down. Why has my Wi-Fi just cut out? Is Has Taylor Swift just took my Wi-Fi down? No! <laughs> okay, I think we just get straight into this. I can't believe this is real. What the hell do you mean I'm actually about to know what these songs sound like in my head? Let's click play on track one, which is Fortnite, which is featuring Post Malone. I was <laughs> this happens every single time with a Taylor Swift release, but my brain doesn't always catch up at the speed at which I am listening. Like my ears are hearing it and my brain is not taking it in. So I'm not gonna be able to sit here and be like, I think this is about this or about this person. I also don't love doing that. I really like that. I feel like, of course, I was gonna say that, but I think it's a really strong opening track. I can't believe that that's the single. Also, the opening line of the album being, I was supposed to be sent away, but they forgot to come and get me. The whole visuals that we have so far are giving hospital, right? And I also think, is it hits different? It is hits different, where that is the closing of Midnight's running into the opening of this is Chef's Kiss. I'm reading the lyrics alongside it, and I'm like getting such strong Matty Healy energy. And I just, surely not, surely not, surely not. Okay, we're gonna move on. Listen to track number two, which is the Torture Poet Department. This is the title track. I have no idea what this is gonna sound like. I don't know how she can fit the Torture Poets Department into a song. Well, that's very mouthy, but we shall see. You left your typewriter at my apartment Straight from the Torture Poets Department Like who uses typewriters anyway? Real. I have to pause that there. If you were doing a Google alongside those names like I was, I've heard of Dylan Thomas and I was like, why have I heard of Dylan Thomas? He is a Welsh poet. Patty Smith is a poet. They're all poets. Of course they're poets. Okay, a couple of thoughts. I think that this is the first time we've ever had Jack referenced by name in a song, which is cool. Um, I also think this is also like sonically, I actually really like the sound of this. I was quite nervous when I'd seen people classifying this as just broad pop because so far I would say this is definitely a mixture of like the synth pop sound that we hear on Midnight mixed with a little bit folklore, a little bit reputation, which I guess is what the critics were saying before this actually came out. Uh, can we also please just talk about the lyrics? At dinner you take my ring off my middle finger and put it on the one people put wedding rings on and that's the closest I've come to my heart exploding like I love this it's gonna need some unpacking there's a lot of names like who is Lucy do I know Lucy you told Lucy you'd kill yourself if I ever leave is that not like such a big theme like clearly this was not healthy oh man okay track three straight off the back of that is called my boy only breaks his favorite toys also by the way that's like a five minute song the tortured poets department oh she really said Barbie Summer. <laughs> what do you mean once I fix me, he's gonna miss me? I The pre-chorus, sorry, I am also looking at the lyrics. Like I say, my brain can't take it in at the speed at which I hear it. 
especially at 4 a.m. You should have seen him when he first got me, and then the following pre chorus, you should have seen him when he first saw me. I feel it's like, you know, if you meet somebody and then you like introduce them to your friends, and you're like, no, no, but like when we first got together, or like when, when I first met them, like, and you're kind of like compensating for the fact that now, this is not that, but when you first met them, there's a lot of descriptions like puzzle pieces in the dead of night, they fit together so well when it's night time. I've seen a lot of people in the last couple of weeks unpacking false god to be like, this is literally them saying we're so toxic, but we work when we're together and alone. I think this is also like very much that. I actually also really like that it's kind of beaty. It's kind of like da 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 da, -da but it's heartbreaking, which is a Taylor Swift must, like tragedy and heartbreaking lyrics across a bop. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna play Down Bad. This is also a four and a half minute song. Did you really beat me Am I gonna say that that's my favorite so far? Like that's immediately just gone to number one of my ranking of the four that I've heard. I love that. I don't think there's a Taylor Swift song as angry as this. I don't think she is so explicit in her like anger and literally explicit in her swearing in any of her other songs. I love this. Like you can really feel that she wrote this when she was like angry sad. I think if we're going like buying into the five stages of grief, this is 100% anger. Also, I actually can't believe there's a line in a Taylor Swift song. I might just die, it would make no difference. Like that is not the girly pop that people think of when they listen to Taylor Swift. This is a lot actually. There's so much still to unpack and I definitely have to leave that to the like mastermind Swifties on Twitter and TikTok who will unpick these. And without that, I'm just listening off of my own ears and my own knowledge. I really, I really like this. How dare you think it's romantic leaving me safe and stranded. There's so much going on here. Safe and stranded, contradicting each other. The idea that she was by herself, but it was like originally her safe haven. Oh, it sounds like such a, a gaslighty relationship. This really doesn't give healthy. Okay, I'm kind of just putting off the track five. Next up is So Long London. This is the song I'm without doubt most excited to hear. It's track five. Oh, as a, as a British Swifty, are we about to lose her love for London? I fear that we are. I don't think it's gonna be a bop, but I'm gonna do this anyway. She never misses and a track five will just always make me cry. I think the line that just did that was, I'm just mad as hell because I love this place for so long. What a heartbreaking thought that now it's somewhere she can't go back to without this, without this relationship, which I just think is, is <laughs> explored and exposed so much in this. Like you might as well have his bloody name in here. You've got a Hampstead Heath referenced by name. I think so long London stitches undone, two graves, one gun, I'll find someone. And the alternation between you'll find someone. I feel she's really grappling with herself. Like if we separate, we'll find other people, will we? we will will we you will will i like it's very much like back and forth i also think if you think about the song glitch where it's like i'm fastening myself to you with a stitch and then the lyric stitch is undone oh everything just weaves so nicely together there's so much in here that i could unpack how much sad did you think i had did you think i had in me how much tragedy oh good i'm gonna like i say need some time to really take this in i think also it's quite nice at the beginning she's singing about how she's wet through her clothes weary bones caught the chill and then by the end of it she's saying goodbye to london she's saying a moment of warm sun i'm not the one I'm moving on from this. She's moved from like the cold, wet, gray imagery of, of London. A moment of warm sun, and I don't think she's happy by the end of this song, definitely not, but I do think there's a shift in like imagery. I don't think she was having a moment of warm sun in London, to be honest. Next is, but daddy, I love him, which if you don't know, is a quote from The Little Mermaid. And also I think just a quote, I also think Harry Styles has a t-shirt that says it. I am of the belief that that is a coincidence. I feel stressed every time I click on one, ready? But can I just add, this is funny, this is funny to me. So Long London is not marked as explicit, but in the UK, 
pissed is like a swear word, but then they'll mark explicit songs when she says god damn, but I don't think in the UK god damn is considered a profanity, but it's not marked as an explicit song, that's interesting, because she, I would say she is swearing in that. This is But Daddy I Love Him. I love that. <laughs> Where do we even start? The chorus is insane. Screaming, but daddy, I love him. I'm having his baby. No, I'm not, but you should see your faces. My initial thought was she meant that literally, as in like she actually at one point was having his baby and then she was singing, no, he's not. As the song went on, I kind of thought, was she singing like, oh, I'm having his baby. No, I'm not. But like, you should see your faces. I, I really don't know how to interpret that. I would be very interested to hear what you think. I also think that like, this is very personal. And I also, I don't fully understand this one. I think definitely I will have to listen to this a few times and listen to some other people on TikTok explaining it. She is Taylor Swifting hard with lyrics like sanctimoniously performing soliloquies I'll never see. The, the exploration of like mental health and mel mental illness is so strong throughout this album so far. Scandal does funny things to pride but brings lovers closer. Okay, fresh out the slammer. I'm so intrigued. Ooh, that's like a western movie. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think she's actually singing about the end of the relationship. I think people were so quick to be like, oh, fresh out the slammer is like about now. Now, pretty baby, I'm running back home to you. Fresh out of the slammer. I know who my first call will be to. I really do. I don't think this is about now. My friends tried, but I wouldn't hear it. Watching me daily disappearing just for one glimpse of his smile. Again, the themes are so similar across a lot of these songs, but also it's interesting to know that like maybe some of her friends weren't a fan of this relationship. Okay, next up, I'm so excited about this one. This is Florida featuring Florence and the Machine. So excited for this. I do. I really rate Florence the machine. They said I was a cheat again. Ooh, nice. And my friends all smell like weed or little babies. And the city. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I got drunk and I did to watch me work. Oh my girls got their lace and their crimes. I did my best to make to rest. I'm the bus. Get on my back and in my home. <laughs> Is that my new favourite? I actually think it is. Has that just rocketed pretty high up my ranking of overall Taylor Swift songs? Florence and the Machine or Florence Welch, her voice. Welsh? 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 Absolutely perfect on that. That is the perfect perfect Taylor Swift collaboration and you saw me doing this because I'm so glad that Florence gets like a whole section of that song and she is not a backing vocalist that is so strong I love that not what I thought at all I really did believe the theory that this was going to be about how she was in Florida when the news broke about the breakup but it's not at all really or maybe it is but like i'm misreading it little did you know your home's really only a town you're just a guest in so work your life away to pay for a timeshare down in destin still not 100 percent sure where destin is or it is a city in florida that figures i mean oh i just absolutely love this that the, the oh, no skips so far by the way no skips so far what was florida track eight are we on track eight already oh my gosh we're halfway through okay we're gonna move on but i've still got so much to say about that i absolutely adore it i also can really feel <laughs> seeing the instagram stories of all the girlies going to florida to go to disney realistically especially if you're british you don't really know why else you're visiting florida i need to forget so take me to florida i've got some regrets i'll bury them in florida it's gonna be on the insta stories and i don't think that that's giving mickey mouse actually i love it, I really like that. Guilty as sin. Are we, are we about to do a 180? I feel we could be. Ooh. Quick pause because I did just have to Google what tryst means. I've never heard that word. Uh, apparently, that is a private romantic rendezvous between lovers. Maybe I'm just stupid, by the way. <laughs> Maybe that's in day to day vocab. I've never heard it. In 
wait a second, wait a second. Sorry, I hate pausing them midway through. I want to listen in full, but like I keep these belongings locked in lowercase inside a vault. Can I just tell you that reputation is all in lowercase and is one of only two vault vaults that we've not yet heard. So I definitely do think if she's singing about their trip, romantic rendezvous between lovers, the beginning of their relationship, how she's recalling it, she's keeping these belongings locked inside a vault in lowercase. I could be reaching, but I think I might be onto something there. Mark my words, wait and see. I've also just seen a tweet whilst I was listening to the very end of that song, by the way, that I feel I just have to mention. Remember when I said about the lyrics safe and stranded? Well, somebody has just compared that to, how dare you think it's romantic leaving me safe and stranded? Please leave me stranded. It's so romantic. She sings ironically in New Romantics. Boy was not taking notes, I feel. And he could have. It's all right there. Oh, golly. Okay, this one is Who's Afraid of Little Old Me? I have heard from other people, apparently, uh, that this is a play on the book, which I believe is called Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. I really should have probably heard of this because I did write an A-level paper on Virginia Woolf. That was a good six years ago and I don't remember it's irrelevant to mention the constant literary theme. But it's also a film starring Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. You could be my jailer, Burton to this Taylor. Oh, it's so good. The Taylor Swift cinematic universe really pulls through every time. Who's who? Who's that? Wait, the beginning of that sounds so similar to the Lana Del Rey song, Why Has It Just Gone Out of My Head? Blue Jeans, is it Blue Jeans that starts like that? And now, the who's who of who's that? I'm sticking by that, it sounds a bit similar. You don't get to tell me about <laughs> I I would be. I am. Tell me everything is not about me. What if it is? Real. She's real for that. Okay, I love coming to YouTube with theories that are probably incorrect. Like I say, I have not read anything about this album alongside. I'm literally just listening and reading. But I would say the entirety of this song is actually not really about her relationship. So I just was making the comparison to He Could Be My Jailer, Burton to This Taylor, which is from Ready For It, which is the opening track of Reputation. And I would say that this is a link back to the opening of Reputation, but not to do with her relationship. I would say this is about the media and how they have constantly had her on this pedestal waiting to do something wrong and the second that she does they're like down her throat for it you caged me and then you called me crazy i was gentle till the surface life made me mean third verse about how she's fearsome she's wretched she's wrong she puts narcotics in her music she'll sue you if you stand on her grass she's always drunk on her own tears isn't that what they all say i do think that it's interwoven with the breakup but i also think there's a definite look at Look at all these things people say about me. How can you expect anything less of me? Look at what you've turned me into because of how you portray me. Like, I definitely do think that this is really quite interesting. I also think I'm fearsome, I'm wretched, I'm wrong. I put nar narcotics into all my songs and that's why you're still singing along. Because people are still, to this day, critical and confused about how she's had such a longevity. Like, her music that is girly pop and chart toppers and like nothing more than songs about her ex-boyfriend. How is it everybody's still listening and singing along? She must be doing something. It could not be her talent. It could not be her songwriting. It could not be her incredible way of connecting with her fans. Can you tell her find this a bit, a bit much? <laughs> uh, anyway, I really like that. I didn't expect that to sound like that or to be like that. Next one is I can fix him. No, really, I can. Predictions for this one. It's only two minutes, by the way, two and a half minutes. The brackets make me think of the 1975 and we all know who she had a little fling with last year. We might want to pretend it didn't happen. So Sounds like it definitely could be. <laughs> Feel it definitely is. Okay, I don't really have a clue what that one is about. I like the ending of it though. Like, I like it. It's like, I can fix him. No, really, I can. Well, maybe I can't. Like real for that. I, I feel quite overwhelmed. I feel by this point in an album, what are we on? We're about to start track 12, which is L-O-M-L. -L. I cannot wait to listen to this, but I feel a bit like overwhelmed at this point because I'm just osmosisizing so many new lyrics and facts. But we're gonna listen to Lommel, which is love of my life, usually is what it stands for. There's a lot of theories if it's gonna be love of my life, loss of my life, lover of my life, last of my letters, lesson of my life, or if it's going to shift meaning throughout. So let's find out. I'm very excited. There's so many theories about this one. Oh. 
So it was loss of my life, which I didn't have. I thought it was going to be lesson of my life. I don't know why. I love that. I actually think that that is going to improve over time. That's going to be one that's a Garoa. All these plot twists and dynamite must just steal your girl and make her cry. Said, I'm the love of your life. Talking rings and talking cradles. Like, I don't think she actually could have spelled out any more obviously what she actually wanted with this man. Like, she literally gave the man a manual and he still messed it up. Dude. <laughs> also, because something counterfeit's dead, I feel like must be counterfeit. I think there's been a glitch. Okay, my camera's flashing. We're gonna take a temporary pause, which kills me because the next song is I Can Do It With A Broken Heart, but we do have four songs left. So I'm gonna make a coffee and then I'm gonna come back. We've got a coffee, we go again. Okay, so the next track is I Can Do It With A Broken Heart. So incredibly excited. What is the backing? The truest thing she has ever written. I cry a lot, but I'm so productive. It's an art. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> you don't say. This is Taylor Swift girly pop with the most depressing, heartbreaking lyrics. Baby, girl, Wait, that's actually so just like that's so sassy at the end. I love that. I love it when she kind of ad libs on a track. I think that that's just. Like, you know you're good when you can even do it with a broken heart. Like, at least she knows that she is a slay. For getting up and performing every single night. Walking miles in stilettos. Like, I actually think not enough people are talking about how she does the whole performance of the era's tour in those shoes. Like, I literally cannot walk down the street in a pair of heels. I have to hold on to somebody. And she is up there night after night after night in those bloody shoes. Like, at least she knows she's good. She is good. But it also makes me so sad to think of like the press and the crowds and everybody being like she is on an award-winning smash hit best-selling tour and she's singing our oh, miserable nobody even knows it <laughs> like that makes me a bit sad okay next up we've got the smallest man who ever lived Was wait it starts with the, the same kind of breath as you're losing me start <laughs> Again, I don't love doing this, but I don't think there's any question that that is about Matty Healy of the 1975. I just feel as though who else is she possibly singing about? Who else wears a Jehovah's Witness suit that is literally so Matty Healy? Like, look at this, look at this, look at this. Like, if Rusting My Sparkling Summer was the goal, if you think about the Eras tour being her Sparkling Summer, and they dated for what, maybe two months, the end of spring last year into summer. In public showed me off, then sank into your story and oblivion is obviously not about Joe because when was he showing her off in public? Also, I mean, maybe he gets stoned, but I feel like Matthew Healy definitely given that energy. You deserve prison is a like big statement. In a separate tiny box somewhere else inside of me is a 1975 fan, but it's locked far away right now. It's, it's buried, it's gone, it's... Okay, we've got the alchemy, which is net alchemy is the act of turning something to gold that isn't gold. So think of the fairy tale. What is the fairy tale called? Is it Rumpelstiltskin? Okay, no. So he makes straw into gold. I knew there was a link here somewhere between the Rumpelstiltskin fairy tale and the act of alchemy. Um, alchemy, yeah, is basically the, the thought of turning something into gold, which I think if you think about the lyrics, once believed love would be burning red, but it's golden like daylight, is incredibly interesting because did she just make this love golden like daylight? Was it actually maybe not? It's not black and white, it's not red, it's not golden either. I think this is a nod to how she got it wrong in the Lover album. Without hearing it, they are my thoughts on what this song is gonna be. Nice. This happens once every few lives. Maybe I'm wrong. Ooh. How I love to be wrong like that is nothing to do with Joe. I cannot believe we've just got a Travis Kelsey song on this album that was not on my bingo card. I thought maybe next album there'll be some reference to her falling in love again. Like this song was surely 
this album, sorry, was surely finished and done before this happened, um, before this relationship. Clearly not. I absolutely love it. I love that. I really was not expecting that. That has just blindsided me and I am very happy about it. I love to be wrong. And that is why you can never presume from a Taylor Swift title what on earth it is that you're gonna get. Yeah, my original theory stands, I guess could have worked, didn't work. This is better. <laughs> Ditch the clowns, get the crowns. I've seen a lot of people on Twitter being like, I'm so glad she's finally free of the British. I feel she just sang the same. And that hurts as a brick. Final track. I'm so excited about this. This is Clara Bow or Clara Bow. I don't know how you say her surname. This is Clara Bow. Let's listen. I'm hoping this sounds and is written similar to The Lucky One. You look Sorry, what a way to end the album. And I know there are multiple other songs and probably more that have just come out because it's just past 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. How has this taken me two hours? Um, that is the first time she's ever said her own name. The, the TikTok girlies are gonna love that because you can put that into her album ranking sound. What a way to end the album. You look like Taylor Swift in this light. We're loving it. You've got Edge. She never did. The future is bright as dazzling. I feel this is along the same theme as nothing new but more mature and explored through the idea of just Hollywood generally. I'm not gonna lie. I feel I've not taken a lot of this in. We've got to the last song. My brain's fried. I don't know that much about Clara Bow. Clara Bow. I'm so shocked that she's just said you look like Taylor Swift, what the hell? I'm shocked to the core, to the core, and my camera's fighting for its life. Golly, has she just released something else with it being 2 a.m. now? Shall we have a look? Oh my god, has she actually? Has she actually? Ha she actually has. No way, has that actually just happened? What the hell? What the hell? Oh my god. 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 31. No way, has she actually just released like 17 more songs? My, my camera, I can't upload this reaction video, it's gonna be so bloody long. Oh my actual god, this woman is insane. This woman is insane. I don't know what to do now. I don't know what to do because my camera's dead. I can't believe that's real. I actually can't believe I also just caught that moment on camera. What the hell? What the hell? Okay, well, uh, Clara Bow is not the end of the album. I don't know what to do. Okay, I know what I'm gonna do because my camera is dead and also otherwise this video will be literally two hours long. I'm gonna listen through and I'm gonna take notes and then I'm gonna come back at the end and fill you in on all of that because otherwise we really will be here such a long time. But if it's anything like the Midnight's 3 a.m. edition, the best songs were in that bit. So I'm just gonna have a moment to myself here and listen to the album through, but don't worry, I'm, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm back. I feel I've just had the most unhinged three hours of my existence. I was never a two album believer. Like I really, really wasn't expecting this. I don't know if you could tell. I've just listened to the 15 other tracks. It is now 8.30 a.m. Three and a half hours since I sat down. Actually nearly four hours since I sat down here. And I have a lot of thoughts. So I'm not gonna play the tracks alongside speaking about them because I had to charge up my camera and I wanted to listen. Also was like listening along with my friends because I'd been ignoring all my WhatsApp chats while listening the first time but my fellow Swifty friends I was talking to them whilst listening which was also really lovely however I've got a lot of thoughts because what the hell I think the more I've kind of read a little bit of Twitter alongside this I definitely think maybe I was missing a little bit of the point with some of the songs which always is the way because I listen to it like how I interpret it obviously um, and then I'm going to Twitter and I'm like oh but anyway we're gonna go through the extra tracks starting with the black dog Firstly, the only notes i've really written about this are i love the rock element the sound is amazing sounds like it should fit on reputation i also can't believe the theories about this being about the pub in london are actually correct like there is a pub called the black dog and everybody was like oh it's maybe about this and everybody was like that's such a reach it's not, it's not gonna be about this random pub but like it kind of is yeah i didn't write too many notes on the black dog i really do feel as though i need to listen about 12 more times also so if you've got this far in the video and you have any thoughts and you want to add anything in the comments like my mum just got up and was like did you love it and I was like I did I did love it and I also feel as though I was just punched <laughs> and I also feel as though I have loved this personally and my overarching feeling is like I just want to give her a hug and like I feel like she's been through so much stuff and people don't even really know the half of it and nobody really understands it either like, there's nobody on the level like she is on this level and 
that must be so lonely like that really comes through like i think the the mental health and the struggle really comes through in this album anyway the next track is i'm gonna get you back which i thought was quite quippy at the beginning i also think it's like a little similar to the olivia rodrigo track get him back double-edged meaning of this like i wasn't really too sure if she was like i'm gonna get you back as in like we'll get back together which i definitely think it could be a bit or if it was like oh, i'll get you back for this like you'll pay for this also similar vibes to olivia rodrigo's song i definitely do think there's some similarities in this part of the song to like big city wrong choices we have i liked it no real notes this one definitely isn't like the main standout of the extras for me but again this changes every single time i listen to it i remember listening to the midnight's 3am edition and like playing the great war and being like that was good next and like now that's literally one of my favorite songs. The Albatross to me sounds like same kind of vibes as Cowboy Like Me in how she's singing. The vocals sound kind of similar. I don't really know if it's just like giving cowboy energy, especially at the beginning. Such nice imagery. Locked me up in towers, but I'd visit in your dreams. Like the storytelling really doing its thing. Wait, I need to listen to this to actually. One less I definitely don't have as many notes on these as I was talking about the first 15 songs. I am sorry that the second half of this is going to be shorter, but I do feel like you maybe understand 31 songs is kind of insane. There's a lot of singing about alcohol, about drugs, about things that on an old school Taylor Swift album you would never have had. Crazy to see how her storytelling and how like world building is the same in across all of her music, but her themes are so much darker now. Which I guess also does come with getting older and like being more mature, being more confident. Your audience also growing up with you, I suppose. But yeah, I definitely think there's, there's themes that are like, oh, this is very dark. Okay, so the next one is Chloe or Sam or Sophie or Marcus. I can't believe this is a, a track title. Like, I really am shocked that is a thing. I also know people with these names, like couples with these names, which is so bizarre to me. I actually really liked it. A huge, huge, huge fan of the Scarlet and Maroon reference in this song. I just love a nod back to any other of her work. And I think Maroon being one of my favorite songs and the callback to that whole, like, the red imagery that runs through Maroon as the song, but is not actually, she never mentions red, but, like, obviously red being an album and the song in itself. I think that the the colours, the colours, there's so much to do with the colours, obviously of gold and also of red. Again, I think a lyric that really stood out was too impaired by my youth to know what to do. I wasn't listening to this and trying to work out who it was about and I also haven't checked to see what Twitter was saying about this one. Let's have a little look. Oh yes, the lyric, you needed me, but you needed drugs more and I couldn't watch it happen. I don't want to be a, every song's about Matty Healy believer, but like, that I feel the drug references for me, like who else is she singing about? But yeah, I really like this. I think, again, it's kind of disguised by like a BT track. I hate that these videos turn into speculations. That definitely is not what this is about. And I also do think that regardless of whoever she's singing about, you can't discredit that every single song is a work of art. Like, okay, the next song is How Did It End, which is where we got the lyric, we hereby conduct. I was really a big fan of that. I did see a lot of people earlier saying that we hadn't had any of the lyric leaks from the LA events or from the Apple Music teasers in any of the original songs. Like, where were they? Which is a really clever marketing tool because people knew something else was coming. But yeah, I really liked that it opened with that. I also love the lyric, lost the game, the the game of chances what are the chances what breaks me about this song is when she's singing it's happening again and you just know that she's talking about the fact that she's going through another public relationship like you can almost hear the press and the media being like singer songwriter taylor swift goes through yet another breakup and like how hard must that extra level of scrutiny be when you're already going through something so difficult. Both of these things obviously have such a catastrophic effect on her. If you think of like a six year long relationship and then however long she was with Matty for, we don't really know the details of this, but I think you can tell that she's like two things, two awful events have already happened to her. And then you get the added layer happening again. Look at Taylor Swift, she can't keep a man. Like I just think, like heartbreaking perfect incredible so high school is so much fun i have so many notes on this i was listening like woo and then i got to like the first verse in and i literally put a screenshot of what i wrote down here marry kiss or kill me and i was like wait a second wait a second look at this clip and then uh taylor swift would be the kiss get another travis song i'm so happy about this and this song is a bop i've literally written Wait, wait, Travis, truth dare spin bottles, touch me while your boys play Grand Theft Auto is a hilarious line, by the way. I didn't, I didn't think GTA would be getting a shout out 
in a Taylor Swift song ever actually but this is why I think you just can't ever expect anything because you're always surprised and then at the bottom I just put I need this in a chick flick 90s style coming of age movie where the girl gets the guy and the high school team win the league and I just need this film like this is giving American rom-com like somebody please make that film because this this track is perfect shifting turns rapid over two i hate it here i think that i didn't really know where to start with unpacking this and again i've written notes without really reading too much else i wrote down the lyric if comfort is a construct i don't believe in good luck and then i also wrote down the fact that she said her friends used to play the game where they would pick a decade only purely because me and my best friend in primary school used to do that and we used to like i thought that was really bizarre and then now i'm just realizing i've never had a unique experience like we would play this game where we would go back to the past and we would pick an era to like pretend that we were living in we were like seven years old by the way and we would always pick the victorian era and i was like girl i've never had an original activity in my life i also do think a lot of this the themes of this are again the idea of being too big for all of it too too big to like fit in i think the the themes in anti-hero and the music video for anti-hero are replayed through this album so much like over and over again the the, the thought of being too famous for everything and i also think that's so difficult because what can she she do about that now she can't she can't re-shrink herself also separately to that i actually love the phrase i hate it here because i always like jokingly kind of like the meme i'm like i hate it here oh yeah the only place she can go that she feels safe is her inner life when she's above everything when she's not involved with everything else she actually loves it okay the next song such a sleigh and i did i just didn't have this on my bingo card so it's called thank you amy capitalized like this quite clearly she's spelling out kim there's only really one kim before i even clicked play i was like kim kardashian okay didn't have this on my bingo card i thought we had left the kim kanye drama kind of in the lover era like we've not really revisited that we've had some references like i was just not expecting it and then i was thinking like okay all of the links to like the headlines the paparazzi the grave a literal grave i was like this is about that this is definitely about that and then i think that she's just so clever in how she writes this because like she can move on and she can move past it and she knows she's won but she'll never get over what that whole family put her through and i think that it's actually good that she's revisited it because she's definitely saying like when it came out that taylor swift was telling the truth in all of that where was the noise where was the apology where was the the absolute raucous that was caused on social media the first time around by the kardashian coming for her neck when it was proved that she was correct where was that in her defense like there just, it just was like we don't stand the kardashians in this house we are not a fan we will not be streaming we will not be buying Ooh. but i also i absolutely love the lyric and it absolutely cracked me up her use of words like saintly are you joking I don't even know if it's a boy or a girl i know nothing about the kardashians but i do know that one of their kids is called saint so that cracks me up and then i also think the lyric about her kids singing her songs is so funny because have we not previously had instagram stories from the kardashians using taylor's music where the kids are like Bam. absolute slay didn't have it on my bingo card for this morning and i'm bloody glad that it is now there i looked through people's windows the first thing i thought of before i clicked on this was i looked through the windows of this love even though we boarded them up i guess it also does kind of work again i wrote down like the idea of her being on the outside looking in she's constantly looking at people that have this like rosy healthy happy life and happy relationships you know if you're like walking through a town or a city and it's dark and people have the lights on in their house and you can see straight in i'm guilty of this like not in a weird way i'll just like you, you glance in you're like oh look they're having dinner or they're having they're watching tv or whatever like i don't imagine taylor swift is actually kicking around tribeca staring through people's windows like oh wait what are they doing but i kind of get the imagery and i think again it's just the idea that she's constantly on the outside does she also not have a track called the outside from her debut album the themes the history book on the shelf always repeating itself so yeah that's all i really wrote down i also wrote down the fact that she said she's attending a christmas party from the outside i also think it's quite sad and quite real because like she literally is at christmas party in the form of her music she's got a christmas song she grew up in a christmas tree farm she's christmasy she's in the room with those people her tracks are playing her songs are on the radio's playing but she's herself is alone somewhere else. i thought the imagery was nice it's definitely not my favorite track off of the album this one i think you can tell that jack antonoff produced this one over the other tracks which are predominantly in collaboration with aaron desena on the additional album however i am not a jack antonoff hater like i like jack antonoff i actually think he has created some of taylor swift's best work and i think that he is very clearly and obviously a properly good friend to her and i think he's very talented however i think you can tell he produced this one. the prophecy heartbreak this is heartbreaking like 
What do you mean? She wants to change the prophecy, doesn't want money, just wants someone who wants my company. Like she's literally begging at this point for somebody to just love her how she is. This is not about the money for her. And I also think that that's quite interesting because that is something people bring up a lot. Like, especially at the minute, I think it's like Taylor Swift becomes a billionaire and like the kind of thing that passing people make comments about, like extended family members or people on the news are like, oh, did you see Taylor Swift became a billionaire? Like, yeah, how incredible for her bloody successful. How great that she's done it off her own hard work and her own merit. Brilliant. It must be quite diminishing to be that person living your life when you're not that happy and all people are talking about is she's so rich, how could she complain? <sighs> yeah, this just broke my heart. Had to also add, because it did make me laugh, the lyric about howling at the moon, I was like, oh, are we... Are we Team Jacob? Are we Taylor Lautner? Are we getting another music video? <laughs> Very sad. Next one is Cassandra, and I Googled this because I was like, Cassandra, I feel I know it from like ancient Greek mythology. I don't know it in enough depth. So the actual definition is, it was an ancient Greek Trojan priestess, and usually she would have been very accurate with her prophecies, but they would have been so devastating that people would not want to believe her. And this is another Kim Kardashian revisit. Like, I was not expecting this, but it absolutely slaps. And the whole like, you don't, you didn't believe me, do you believe me now? And I actually think this one's a little more Kanye West coded. And I think that again, she's just asking like, where was the sorry? Where was the apology? I've literally just written, we do not stand the Kardashians in this house. Spent a lot of the time I was listening to it, working out what it was about and who Cassandra was. There's a strong link straight away. That was where I got the call. The first stone's thrown, they're screaming in the streets. There's a raging riot. When it's burned the bitch, they're shrieking. But when the truth comes out, it's quiet. I actually muddled up this one with the other one, didn't I? This is how I've just got 31 new songs and I've just muddled up the Amy song with this song and I don't even know what they're called yet. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> I'm so thrown. I'm so like, oh, I guess, I mean, to be honest, the themes are fairly similar. It also makes me sad. I think this really humanizes her actual experience as well. Like she was patching up a crack on the wall when she got the call. Like maybe she wasn't literally, but like she was just in her house, her new house that she had just bought. And then her world literally cracked around her and crumbled. Like she never misses. After Cassandra, we have Peter. I am a sucker for a Peter Pan reference in any music. We have Peter losing Wendy in Cardigan. We have the song Wendy by... Maisie Peters and this song sits alongside it so well if you have not listened to Wendy by Maisie Peters listen to that after you've listened to Peter and I think the two go hand in hand honestly again throughout the whole album there's so many like goddess references and like Greek mythology references also not 100% sure and again I don't want to be like I don't know who this is about but like I think the mention of an age was really fitting on this like that's the first time she'd really tried to link the Peter Pan imagery specifically to a person for me it was like the fact that this person was 25 why do I want this to be about Harry Styles. <laughs> Why do I want Harry Styles to be getting a looking on the album, even though he's definitely not? Yeah, I really, really like this. I think Peter Pan as a theme, as a fairy tale, fits so well within art, generally. Like the idea of never really growing up, the idea of coming back for somebody, he's gonna go back for Wendy and then he doesn't and Wendy grows up and that's it. I also think it could be the idea of like kind of growing out of a relationship. Like eventually Wendy has to go home and Peter goes back to Neverland. And that theme, <sighs> It's so good. Next up is the Bolter. Immediately my mind went to getaway car because they literally mention a getaway car, but I'm not sure there's really any link. I love the lyric, she's been many places with men of many faces. Very, very good. I also wrote down, this reminds me of it's time to go. Like sometimes knowing that it's time to leave is the upper hand, like being one step ahead the whole time. I didn't write much for the Bolter. I feel I needed more notes. I feel I was overwhelmed throughout this entire experience. If you've got anything to add, do you let me know. I actually can't remember exactly which albums I ordered. <laughs> I've only, I think I ordered two and I don't know which bonus track is on the other one. I definitely have the original with the manuscript on. Do I have the Bolter? Next up is Robin. This one I was a little confused about. I think that it was like a really lovely song. It was very like quiet, very peaceful in my head. It immediately reminded me of Seven, which is one of my all time favorite Taylor Swift songs. So I do think I need to listen again and really take it in. I also think it sort of reminded me of Never Grow Up. And I think Seven and Never Grow Up sort of sit together as it is anyway, because there's a lot of links to childhood. There's a lot of links of like protect this child because the world is mean when they grow up and I think for her sorry my whatsapp is popping off that's my friend Johanna she's too good 
She is too good, real. Yeah, the idea that these summers that she thinks back to when she was a child in Pennsylvania are so like wrapped in warm nostalgia for her now. Taylor Swift grew up very young and then was such a like young pop star. Kind of sad to think about. I literally wrote at the bottom, I actually just want to give her a hug. I think if you think back to yourself as a child versus you as an adult, I think you, you do want to look back and just kind of be like, oh, there's so much still to come. You have no idea. No room in your dreams for regrets. It's just a childlike innocence. And also that is a strong thing theme that runs throughout most literary canon, especially in just just literature in general. The idea of like childlike innocence and protecting it and that being something that is so quickly shattered and lost. If we're looking at this with a literature lens. Okay, then there's the final, final song, which is the manuscript. And this shocked me. I kind of wish I had reacted on camera to this. You should have seen my face when I read the first verse. I was, is this the first time Miss Taylor Swift has ever directly, directly sung about sex? Because I feel like it actually is. I don't think we've ever had it so like just, just said. Like it's always kind of metaphors or like something else. So I was like literally wait a second. Second, wait a second and then immediately I was like is this the red era like what are we talking about here and then I quickly typed the manuscript into Twitter and a lot of people were talking about Jake Gyllenhaal and he was not on my bingo card for this either and I am actually not sure I believe in that but I'm seeing it a lot and then I was like it, it would fit because after she after she dated Jake she dated several other boys her own age younger guys and then I was like wait is is there's callbacks to red and speak now within this song and I just was not expecting that and I definitely definitely think for me the songwriting process of this song has come from the red re-record and how that gave her clarity on the relationship she was in at the time i think you can actually really make a couple of comparisons between her relationship with whoever she's singing about in red jake and her relationship with joe who she was with at the time of the re-recording obviously they're both actors both relationships were heartbreaking for her and i i just wrote down a lot about how re-recording the red album must have given her so much clarity and like made her really think about what she was doing at the time and then we've got to talk about the last line. The only thing that's left is the manuscript. One last souvenir from my trip to your shores. Now and then I reread the manuscript, but the story isn't mine anymore. And I think that that is like the perfect way to close this album. And I think the, the idea of like, as soon as she puts work out into the world, that story is not hers anymore. People are now able to fill in the gaps, make things up. Once it's out for the world to listen to, you're listening to it through whatever lens you want and I think that that must be something that's really difficult about being so autobiographical in your work like imagine having such a personal relationship being really inspired to create art about this experience that only you and this other person have had or you and whoever have had but the second you release that that isn't yours anymore like that is for the taking and I think there's actually some kind of I had this quote before about once the artist releases the art it is for the consumer not the artist I can't remember the exact quote but basically that and I think that that is such a way to end the album like I've not fully digested that that's the closing line the story isn't mine anymore because it's so much bigger than her like this is not just the person of Taylor Swift this is the brand of Taylor Swift the the celebrity Taylor Swift like and I think she must sit there and think this is too much this is actually too much and it isn't me anymore like this is just beyond me and beyond anything anybody really would have ever imagined like it's insane and I think that so much of this album is actually looking at how difficult that is we definitely touched on that in Midnight so I think that's a continuation and I think the album closing with that is actually like so we've reached the end. I am so sorry this is so incredibly long, but Miss Swift just dropped 31 brand new songs and I need to go and listen to them all again. So I'm not gonna waffle on to wrap this video up because it is so long already. If you are still watching, if you're listening to these words, if you've got to the end, please do give the video a thumbs up. It really helps support my channel. It boosts the videos in the algorithm, gets this video out to other Taylor Swift fans. It's just a really lovely thing to do. Do drop a comment down below. What is your favorite song after one day of listening or however many hours it's been? Right now, I cannot possibly pick. I think the two that stand out in my mind off of the original 50 are Down Bad, Florida, So Long London, I Can Do It With A Broken Heart, I love that I said two and then picked four. Those are the four that stand out off the original songs, off of the additional songs. I can't even remember what this is called right now. Our high school is so fun. Thank you, Amy and Cassandra, such a sleigh. And the manuscript, I just, oh, I can't pick. I can't pick. But if you if you can pick, leave them in the comments below. And I shall see you guys on my channel with a regularly scheduled weekly vlog where I won't be this unhinged and it won't be 4.30 in the morning. I love that it's literally got light in this video. My hair has annoyed me the entire time, but was I getting up and straightening my hair at 4 a.m.? No. I've got a I've got an album to listen to back to back. Goodbye guys.